Hey there, folks. Welcome back to, A Quick Note. Today, we're diving into a colorful tale. Ever wondered why blueprints are blue? Stick around because we've got the quick scoop on the surprising history behind those iconic blueprints. Imagine you're holding the secret recipe for success in your hands. Well, lots of folks have this thing called a blueprint for success. It's like a buzzword that everyone uses to talk about their big plans and strategies. But, hey, what's a blueprint anyway? All right, think of a blueprint as a fancy copy of a picture that already exists. Picture this. Engineers and architects use these big prints to show off their project plans. They draw white lines and add some text on a background that's, you guessed it, blue. And no, it's not just because they're huge fans of the color blue. The special blue color of a blueprint is connected to a cool chemical process. Back in 1842, there was this clever English guy named John Herschel. He figured out that mixing ferric ammonium citrate and potassium ferrocyanide caused a chemical reaction, creating something called blue ferric ferrocyanide, or Prussian blue. This fancy-sounding mix could be used to copy documents, kind of like developing photos from negatives. So, that's the magic behind the blueprint's signature blue hue. All right, so back in the day, photographers and creative minds got hooked on this cool technique called cyanotype. It's like the AUG Instagram filter but from the 19th and 20th centuries. First, it was the photographer's thing, making the first ever photo illustrated book. Then, architects and engineers jumped on the bandwagon. Here's the lowdown on how it works. The regular piece of paper and soak it in a mix of ammonium and potassium. Let it dry. Next, you put your drawing on top of the chemically soaked paper, expose them to bright light, and wait for some chemical magic. In just a few minutes, the paper turns into that signature blue color we talked about earlier, the blue ferric ferrocyanide. But here's the twist. Wherever the original drawing had lines blocking the light, those parts stay white. After a quick rinse in cold water to stop the chemical party and letting it dry in the dark, voila. You've got a copy of the original drawing. This copy is like a photo negative. The lines are white against a deep indigo background, all thanks to the chemical reaction. Even though it takes a few steps, people back then loved it. Why? Well, it was quicker and cheaper than drawing giant plans by hand. Think of it as the vintage version of hitting print on a blueprint. Let me tell you a tale about how the color blue found its way into blueprints, a story that's a bit like a dark fairy tale. Picture this. In 1704, there was an alchemist named Johann Conrad Dippel and a dye maker sharing a lab in Berlin, Germany. Dippel was on a quest to create a magical cure for everything, using weird ingredients like hooves, horns, and leather boiled into a stinky potion. Meanwhile, his lab buddy, Diesbach, was cooking up colorful dyes. One day, Diesbach accidentally mixed some potash, borrowed from Dippel's potion, with his insect, alum, iron, and sulfate concoction. And guess what? This gross mix turned into a deep blue, as rich as the night sky. When Dippel figured out what happened, he realized the potash had ox blood, and when it met iron sulfate, bam! Chemical reaction, and a stunning blue emerged. Unlike other blues that were tricky to make and faded easily, this one stayed bold and bright. At first, Dippel named it Berlin Blue, a nod to his city. Later, it got the name Prussian Blue because it was used to dye uniforms for the Prussian army. This blue became a symbol of both fierceness and affection, linked to the army's tough battles and unexpected wins, like in the famous Battle of Waterloo. And that, my friend, is how Prussian Blue found its place in history and eventually in those blueprints we know today. So, by the late 1800s, Prussian Blue wasn't just a favorite of painters and Japanese printmakers, it had become quite the versatile color. It made its way into newspaper ink, typewriter ribbons, and even eyeshadow. Talk about a color with range. But that's not all. Scientists stumbled upon something incredible. Prussian blue could act like a superhero against heavy metal poisoning. It played the role of a magnet, attracting and getting rid of heavy metals from the bloodstream. How cool is that? As time marched on into the 1900s, Prussian blue wasn't just a trendy hue, it was also practical. It became crucial for everyday things, not just because it looked good but because it could do some serious work, like saving the day against metal poisoning. But here's the catch. John Herschel, the guy who discovered the blueprint magic, didn't get to see this practical side of Prussian blue. It took five years after his passing for blueprints to be recognized as a cheap and easy way to copy architectural drawings. Better late than never, right? And that's a wrap on today's quick dive into the world of blueprints. 
If you enjoyed learning about the unexpected journey of Prussian blue and its role in shaping our architectural plans, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring the notification bell for more intriguing, quick note, episodes. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, stay curious.